222. That's 0901 882 222. Cars will cost you no more than 12 feet, but please ask permission before you dial. Yep, and we're going to be answering your questions right after this, which is on now. <laughs> you again. Yeah, all right, don't laugh. I'm just trying on my egghead. Now, if you remember, I made this one for myself last time. <laughs> and be warned, they do get sillier. So, if you do want to try it yourself... <laughs> blow up a balloon so it's slightly bigger than your own head. Cover most of it in four layers of papier-mâché. When it's dry, pop the balloon. Then, tie a piece of string just above your ears to get your head size. Use it to mark round the papier-mâché balloon and then cut it to size. Try it on and draw where your hair disappears. Use those marks to draw in your silly hairstyle. And then paint it. And there you have a silly egghead. <laughs> Funny, aren't they? And, you know, they're brilliant for fancy dress parties. And if you think this type is silly, you can make them even sillier. How about a quiff or even a bun? <laughs> Come and have a look at this. <laughs> now, to add one of those hair pieces onto your egghead, do it before you paint it. And it's a good idea to inflate another balloon inside it to help keep the head in shape. Now, for the bun, it's easy. Just scrunch up a big ball of newspaper and tape that into shape at the back onto your egghead using plenty of tape. Simple as that. Then for a silly quiff, take a double page from a big newspaper, close it, fold it in half lengthways, that's the long way, like that, in half, and then in half again, lengthways, like that. Then roll it up loosely from one end to just over halfway. So I'm just doing it very loosely, a loose roll to just about there, just over halfway, and then tape that into position. Again, using lots of tape. I'm just going to do it very quickly here to show you. One there, one on there, and I think one more on the back to make sure. And then place it on your egghead, and again, tape it into place using lots of tape. And again, one on there, You'll use lots of sticky tape for this, I can guarantee. One on there, one on there, and finally, just to keep it in place, it's my old granddad's toupee tape, I don't think. Then, take your glue mixture, now don't forget it's two part glue to one part water, and the idea is to just paste it all over the hairpiece. You don't have to go over the whole egghead, just the hairpiece, like that, and just lay in some strips of newspaper. The idea is to glue on these papier-mâché strips of newspaper to really neaten it up and strengthen it. I'll just do one more there to show you. And cover the whole thing in a layer of glue and newspaper and then leave it to dry. And when it is completely dry, paint it to match your own hair colour. There it is. <laughs> and then try it on. Do you want to see it? OK, then. Stay there. <laughs> <laughs> well, hello. <laughs> and you can make them any style you like and uh, even get your friends to make them and invite them to an egghead party. And how about this? You can even add on other bits like rolled up newspaper pigtails with ribbons or even make a card cap and stick on some woolly hair. <laughs> Go on, try it yourself. An egghead. Mad. <laughs> Hey guys, whoa, 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 hang on, hang on. There's a goal over there. Come on, let's go and get the goal. Hey, look at this. Oh, oh. It's 
broken. Not to worry, this gives me an idea for a big heart attack. Right. Kick it. Been looking through my old art attack scrapbook again. Do you know what? There's some brilliant art attacks in here. Look at this. A brilliant pen sketch of a fishing village by Jack Lilly. I love the way he's chosen to paint only the sea. Very effective. And what about this design created by William Hayden using cut lino? It looks a bit like wallpaper, doesn't it? Great design. Emily Jones has made this really colourful still life of things that are on her desk and she's used poster paints. It's a very graphic design, this. And Ben Heppleston has drawn this shepherd and coloured everything in using my old favourite, wax crayon. Nice one, Ben. And take a look at this man fishing painted by Becky McComb. Now, she's cleverly remembered to paint the man's reflection in the water. Good trick, that. Rachel Collier has made this collage by carefully cutting out various shapes of coloured card and sticking them onto a red background. Simple and effective. Mark Laurie has drawn one of my favourite things, a caricature. What's your secret, Mark? To make my caricature picture, I looked at myself in the mirror and copied all my features. I made some of them larger than life, so I looked funny. Then I coloured it in. <laughs> I think 
caricatures are hilarious, especially when you exaggerate people's features. You know, I've noticed that some artists in comics, or in cartoons even, exaggerate animals' features to look like humans. Look at this lot. See this? Some are standing up on two legs, others have got clothes on. So, OK, what about doing it the other way round? Make humans look like animals. Well, there's a good game. Cut out some pictures of different dogs from magazines, then cut around them and stick them down like this one. Then, draw a cartoon caricature of the dog's owner. Now, it's often said that dogs look like their owners, so, OK, let's make them look really silly. Let's make the owners look like the dogs. So, with Pixie the Poodle here, she's got that very sort of fuzzy hair, so let's give the owner a real frizzy perm. Like that. And then this little sticky up nose, it's almost a snooty nose, isn't it? So we put the nose in the air like that. Not much chin, so she's a bit of a chinless wonder. So no chin in there. And these sort of dark eyes, let's give her some eye makeup like that. She's already looking like the dog, isn't she? Look at that. Don't forget the jewellery here on the dog's neck. So give her some beads, I think. And what about this fantastic sort of curly coat? Let's give her a little sort of woolly pullover. Here, very posh. You can almost hear a voice now, can't you? There she is. Don't forget a hand in there. She really does look like the dog. <laughs> and then put a skirt on her. And no, I'm not going to give her hairy legs. I think that would be going too far, wouldn't it? So just put her feet in and her shoes like that. And don't forget, last but not least, the lead. And there she is. Pixie the Poodle's owner, Miss Foo-Foo. <laughs> oh, look at this one. There we go. This is Winston the Bulldog. Now, what does his owner look like? OK, he must have a fat head, so a nice big fat head there. And what about this jowly mouth? So a nice big jowly mouth there, like that. And look at these little teeth sticking out at the sides. I think I'll put those in. And a nice big fat blobby nose. So that goes in there with some big nostrils in and again just looking at the dog's features look at these little sort of pixie eyes in there and there's lots of lines under the eyes so i'll just copy those Put the lines under there and what else can we look for these little stubby ears let's put those in there like that so continue that down there and make him look slightly frowning some hair in there and he is after all very tubby so there's his arm like that, and there's his other arm coming round there, like that, and let's make him very tubby, big tummy on him, like that, his belly hanging over his trousers, uh, like that, and there he is. <laughs> Winston the Bulldog and his owner, Mr Bumble. <laughs> oh, here we go, here's Shaggy the Dog, so what does Shaggy's owner look like? Well, let's give her shaggy hair to start with, long and droopy, and I think Shaggy's owner would be called Penelope. Don't ask me why, it just feels right. And you know what I say on Art Attack, if it feels right, draw it. So there it is, long droopy face and shaggy coat for a shaggy hippie chick, I think. Look at this, long shaggy clothes here. And don't forget the flares, very shaggy. And one out there like that. And what about her face? Well, very droopy snout. The dog, that is, so let's give her a long nose. And she's got sort of these droopy eyes and a very wide mouth. And there it is, Shaggy the dog and her owner, Penelope. <laughs> Great fun to do. Make humans look just like their dogs. Try it yourself. To create your own funny picture of people that look like dogs, it's just a case of cutting some different dog pictures out of old magazines. Stick one down onto paper and simply draw in the owner to match the dog. Just exaggerate the dog's features onto the person to get a human with the same character as the dog. And that's it for today. Have fun with your own art attacks and don't forget, you don't need to be a great artist to Art Attack. <laughs> I'll see you next time on CITV for another Art Attack twice weekly. ta -ra! Yes, Neil is on twice a week and he is back on Monday afternoon where we'll be making some very exciting games that you can try yourself at home. I
I will be trying it myself because I really like Artifact. Yes, it is back next week. Now, on today's show, we've got the pick of the day coming up, which is Carol Island, and a very special guest from that show in the studio. Sweet, but make sure you check this out tomorrow afternoon. Who dares wins? The motto for survival on Watership Down. But it's not all fun and games. Out here you don't get second chances. When you live in the wild. Hide. Follow the adventures of a brave band of rabbits in Watership Down every Thursday at ten past four on CITV. It's an amazing kind of thing. Now, another pretty amazing thing is that we've got a very special guest in the studio. I can't believe I'm watching on my telly. He's from practically a mini movie. He's sat right beside me now, and we've dressed the set very special. Absolutely. It's William Mannering, who plays Ralph Rover in Coral Island. Yay! Yay! William, thank you very much for coming in today. You're welcome. Now, I love Coral Island, but for those who haven't seen it, please tell us about the show. Uh, well, it's, uh, it's about three young guys mm -hmm. who get shipwrecked on a desert island, and there's no one else on the island and they have to fend for themselves and sort of catch things to eat and do all that sort of stuff. And then we get attacked by pirates and cannibals. And this, is, this, to this week's episode, to yeah. the, today's episode, is the one where it all kicks off. It's where all the pirates turn up and wow. eat cannibals. Now, and your character's and Ralph, isn't he? And he gets yeah. shit right. What's he like? He's a moral, upstanding, kind of a 1800s chap. Oh, really? Oh. Hey, William, will you stick around and answer some phone questions that we've got? Brilliant. Because this is coming up next. Absolutely, it is CITV's very own shipwreck adventure. It's our pick of the day. It's Coral Island. <laughs> e